Cambodia's ASEAN Chairmanship is a very uh, hot and burning topic uh, that uh, we need to discuss uh, to galvanize ideas, uh, inputs, um, to ensure a smooth preparation for Cambodia's um, uh, uh, role as the ASEAN Chair. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Asian Vision Dialogue. Meet me, Him Sutirot, the host of today's program. Asian Vision Dialogue is created aiming at gathering international and regional I.O. and I.E. scholar to comprehensively discuss about international and regional issues ranging from politics, economics, and traditional and non-traditional security issues that focus on ASEAN, Cambodia, and the Mekong sub-region. Today's discussion is about Cambodian's ASEAN Chairmanship in 2022, Challenges and Priority. And we have Dr. Chiang Van Ret, the President of Asian Vision Institute or AVI, and Dr. Jun Baran Jan Baray, the Strategic Advisor of AVI. So welcome Dr. Van Ret and Dr. Baray. Dr. Van Ret and Dr. Baray, as we know that on the 28th October 2021, last month, um, Brunei Jerusalem have handed over the ASEAN Chairmanship for Cambodia for the year, the whole year of 2022, uh, on the margin of the 38 and 39 ASEAN Summit and related summit. And we know that this is the third time that Cambodian had um, got this kind of uh, duty. However, as you know that um, ASEAN region have moved or arrived at a critical juncture, so this duty is not. Um, as easy or as usual as the previous chairmanship. So in this regard, I would like to pose some question regarding um, the Cambodian priority and challenges and our preparation for the 2022. So for the 2022, what is Cambodia priority and what should be the main focus agenda for Cambodia as a chair in 2022, Dr. Borei? Uh, thank you, Asati Rod, uh, for having me on again, uh, especially on the first episode of the Asian Vision Dialogue. Yes, indeed, um, Cambodia's ASEAN Chairmanship is a very uh, hot and burning topic uh, that uh, we need to discuss uh, to galvanize ideas, uh, inputs, um, to ensure a smooth preparation for Cambodia's um, uh, uh, role as the ASEAN Chair um, next year. Uh, this is the third time, as you have uh, mentioned earlier on, that Cambodia uh, assumed this important role. Um, the first and second time being in 2002 and 2012, respectively. It is an honor, but of course, a very heavy burden uh, for Cambodia and the whole population um, uh, because uh, we are facing unprecedented challenges. Um, and those unprecedented uh, challenges um, are being, uh, number one, the ravages uh, generated by COVID-19 and um, you know, social economic fallout that uh, the pandemic has um, generated. Uh, number two, the, you know, the international uh, uh, system, especially multilateralism and um, global governance uh, have been under attack due to the rise of protectionism, unilateralism, and um, you know, um, populism uh, in the region and across the globe. And last but not least, uh, we are facing uh, intensifying uh, rivalry among major powers that uh, you know, have created a lot of pressure uh, for the region, for ASEAN and its member states as a whole. For such critical uh, context, I think uh, Cambodia, as the upcoming chair, tried to uh, conceptualize and, and, and plan a proper roadmap on how to address uh, those challenges. And that's why Cambodia has proposed the theme for the upcoming ASEAN chairmanship, um, ASEAN Act, or uh, addressing challenges Together, I think based on, on the, the theme, I think the uh, key priorities that Cambodia will be uh, addressing uh, include 
Uh, number one, uh, governizing regional collective uh, actions and response to COVID-19 and to promote, you know, post-pandemic uh, social economic uh, recovery. Uh, number two, um, strengthening multilateralism and re uh, the, the rules-based regional orders in order to um, uh, prepare our uh, region to address you know, the existing and emerging um, regional and global challenges, uh, both uh, traditional and non-traditional uh, security uh, issues. Uh, number three, uh, I believe that um, uh, further promoting uh, ASEAN community building, uh, especially in line with the ASEAN Community Vision 2025, uh, would be one of the key priorities. And of course, uh, we need to plan for the post-2025 um, vision on ASEAN community building process as well. Um, this is a very important uh, 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 role and responsibility uh, because ASEAN has been building uh, a community that is based on three main pillars, uh, economic pillar. And I think on the economic pillar, uh, Cambodia might be uh, prioritizing on the um, uh, further uh, 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 promoting the connectivity projects, uh, particularly the uh, master plan of ASEAN Connectivity 2025, the, narrow, the narrowing of development gaps uh, between ASEAN member states through the implementation of the uh, IAI Work Plan 4 or the Initiative for ASEAN Integration Work Plan 4, which was uh, adopted uh, two years ago. Um, uh, preparing the region to address, you know, digitalization, um, industrialized uh, uh, revolution 4.0 might be uh, key priorities in the ASEAN economic community building process. Uh, I think the region will also promote, you know, a rules-based trading uh, system, uh, particularly with the entry into force of OSAP, the Regional Economic uh, comprehensive uh, partnership uh, which uh, will uh, enter into force uh, uh, later next year. Uh, uh, so, 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 so those are the, the, the priorities. Um, from social cultural uh, pillar, I believe that Cambodia will be working very hard uh, to promote uh, ASEAN uh, values and norms, uh, especially the ASEAN way. A consensus, uh, informality, less rule-based, constructive engagement, so on and so forth, uh, so that we can further promote our unity, uh, relevance, uh, and you know, uh, resilience as a community. Um, ASEAN identity, especially shared identity, uh, will be uh, another area of focus as the chair of, uh, of, of ASEAN next year. And we have to work uh, to make sure that uh, the population in Southeast Asia can have a sense of belonging, uh, a sense of shared identity, or the so-called ASEAN-ness, uh, so that they can be part of the ASEAN community building process. Last but not least, uh, on the um, uh, political and security pillar, I believe uh, Cambodia will be uh, focusing on how to promote unity and centrality uh, and political cooperation uh, to ensure that uh, we can maintain peace, stability, and prosperity uh, in the region. We can ensure you know, ASEAN centrality and ASEAN-led uh, mechanisms in the evolving regional architecture in the Asia-Pacific. Uh, yes, of course, uh, we have to work with uh, ASEAN external pa uh, partners, especially the uh, dialogue partners of ASEAN, uh, to ensure a, 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 a future of the region which is more peaceful, more prosperous, and more win-win, not only ASEAN and its member state, but also other dialogue partners. Thank you, Dr. Burai. So, Dr. Van Wett, besides the priority and challenges that are described by Dr. Burai at the moment, what should be, you know, um, the additional or like one of the most um, um, further prioritized area that Cambodians should focus? Thank you. Next year will be a very critical year because we have three Southeast Asian countries that host uh, important international events. Yeah. 
uh, Indonesia will be the chair of Group 20, G20. Uh, Thailand will be the chair of APEC, Asia Pacific Economic Cooperation, and Cambodia uh, will be the chair of ASEAN. So, so in this context of uh, kind of post-pandemic uh, recovery, I think all these three platforms will pay closely attention to uh, uh, the, the recovery uh, process to ensure that it is uh, inclusive, sustainable, and resilient. Looking from uh, geopolitical dimension, I think the South China Sea and the political crisis in, in Myanmar will kind of dominate uh, the, the agenda of uh, ASEAN summit next year because, you know, um, next year will be the uh, 20th anniversary of the declaration of the Code of Conduct, DOC, yeah. and negotiation process on the Code of Conduct uh, remains uncertain whether we can conclude it by the end of next year. So that is something that uh, we need to keep track. And I think Cambodia is interested in pushing it, uh, the negotiation on COC. If it can conclude by the end of next year, it will be a critical milestone uh, for the Cambodia chairmanship, for ASEAN and China relation, and for the South China Sea issue. Uh, but the South China Sea situation is up and flows over the time, uh, depend on behavior of the mm. claimant states and some extra regional powers, uh, how, how they uh, engage uh, in this issue. So it's, it's highly volatile in a way, the South China Sea. Looking at the, the, the Myanmar issues, I think uh, because of the, the, the lack of implementation of the five-point consensus uh, issued by ASEAN leaders, uh, I think next year we'll need to enforce this uh, in effective way and also uh, find ways to bring different stakeholders in, in Myanmar to negotiation table. So the, 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 the best scenario next year is the capacity of ASEAN and Cambodia as a chair to uh, facilitate this kind of political dialogue, mm -hmm. inclusive political dialogue. We, we cannot be a mediator, uh, we can be a facilitator, right? Uh, because mediation diplomacy is much more complicated than uh, facilitation diplomacy. So what ASEAN can do is to facilitate dialogue, uh, to facilitate a kind of certain level of trust uh, between different stakeholders so that they can talk. Uh, so that is the kind of uh, ultimate goal that we can achieve uh, with regards to Myanmar. And it is complex and it's, it's going to be a long-term issue that we need to to work together to address the, uh, the Myanmar and the involvement of the major power in Myanmar further complicate uh, the situation. Uh, so that that is, I think, the the kind of uh, hot potatoes, uh, hot issues that that can uh, potentially divide ASEAN uh, into different camps, right? and that is a critical risk and a testing moment for ASEAN next year, whether ASEAN is really resilient, whether ASEAN is is able to navigate through all these differences and stay united together, or ASEAN will be further separated and look for different alternatives, right? So that is a critical time, and I, I, I hope that Cambodia Chair can somehow navigate through this uh, uncharted water, very risky uh, situation. So that is, the, I think, the challenges that Cambodia will face uh, next year. Linking to the Myanmar issue, what have ASEAN done so far with regarding to the resolving process in the Myanmar um, context? And um, from your perspective, what have Brunei Jerusalem, the current uh, special envoy for the ASEAN chair, uh, done so far? Uh, well, the Myanmar political crisis um, has once again uh, consumed ASEAN's time and energy. And it is not an easy not an easy task at all for ASEAN and its uh, member state. Um, although the uh, violence uh, has subsided since May, the ingredients for uh, uh, confrontation, especially civil war, are there uh, because of uh, four main reasons. Number one, uh, the military junta, the Tatmadaw, has not shown any signs of a compromise and flexibility. Uh, we service uh, crackdowns 
are on the uh, protesters. And number two, uh, the, the protests and, and even armed resistance have uh, grown even stronger and stronger day by day. Uh, number three, I think uh, it's very um, uh, dangerous as well uh, because of the creation of the government in exile, the National Unity Government or NUG, uh, with an express interest in uh, creating their own armed forces uh, in order to resist again the um, military uh, junta uh, in the country. Uh, last but not least, as uh, Dr. Chiang Wenrit has alluded to earlier on, that uh, external powers have already engaged in the Myanmar crisis, including uh, their engagements with the armed insurgencies. Uh, this is a, a, a dangerous direction uh, that might uh, you know, force Myanmar into a civil war. Uh, I would like to add one more uh, important uh, dimension of the political crisis in Mi Myanmar, the ethnic politics. Uh, as we all know, Myanmar is a, an, an ethnically diverse uh, nation with uh, more than 100 uh, ethnic groups. Uh, if I'm not wrong, 139 ethnic groups uh, recognized by uh, the Myanmar uh, authorities. And some ethnic groups, including six main ethnic groups, have their own armed forces. And the, those six um, uh, ethnic groups have already declared their armed resistance against the military junta. So this is uh, what uh, Myanmar is heading to. Now, uh, because of the com complex uh, situation in Myanmar, ASEAN is in a very uh, difficult position uh, to engage uh, constructively uh, 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 on uh, the issue. Uh, so far, ASEAN leaders uh, adopted the five-point consensus during their uh, meeting uh, in April in Jakarta. Uh, the five-point consensus also includes the appointment of the special envoy of the ASEAN chair. And during the uh, ASEAN ministerial meeting in August, if I'm not uh, mistaken, ASEAN foreign ministers uh, appointed uh, foreign policy to uh, Brunei Jerusalem as the uh, special envoy of um, ASEAN. But uh, so far, uh, the special envoy, His Excellency um, Erdogan Yusof, uh, has yet to visit uh, Myanmar uh, because of um, uh, uh, difficulties uh, from uh, logistic and political points of views. And I'm, I'm sure that uh, uh, His Excellency Iriwan uh, will not pay any visit uh, in his capacity as the special, special envoy of the ASEAN chair in Myanmar during the uh, Brunei's uh, ASEAN chairmanship. Uh, technically, uh, Brunei uh, is still the chair of ASEAN, although Cambodia has been uh, already handed over the chairmanship uh, because uh, Cambodia uh, will assume officially the ASEAN chairmanship uh, on the 1st of January uh, next year. And I think it will be a, a challenging task uh, for Cambodia uh, next year as the chair of ASEAN uh, because of the complexities and challenges that I have alluded to early on. Uh, nevertheless, uh, I think uh, Cambodia uh, have no choice but to uh, fulfill uh, the responsibility and duty as the chair of ASEAN, uh, especially, especially in appointing um, her own special envoy uh, to Myanmar. And I believe that based on Brunei's practice, uh, His Excellency uh, Praxikon might be uh, the uh, special envoy of uh, uh, the uh, chair of ASEAN. Uh, and I think uh, the special envoy uh, will have to start uh, working on uh, the first visit uh, to open you know, 
the uh, new uh, gateway for ASEAN engagement in the Myanmar political crisis. Uh, and uh, it, it's not easy, but uh, I think Cambodia will have to focus on uh, three main issues uh, as the uh, chair of ASEAN and, as the, uh, uh, and, and on the, in the capacity as the special envoy of the ASEAN chair uh, to Myanmar. And the three uh, 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 issues uh, include, number one, uh, we need to help uh, the uh, Myanmar, all you know, parties in the Myanmar crisis, uh, to create condu a conducive environment for political dialogue. And of course, uh, we need to build a political trust among those parties, uh, because political trust uh, is key for political dialogue and for peace and stability uh, in uh, the country. And number two, I think uh, we need to uh, ensure a peaceful uh, settlement mechanism which is based on a uh, win-win uh, outcome. Uh, we cannot exclude any key players in the Myanmar crisis if we want to have a constructive, a peaceful uh, settlement of the crisis over there. Uh, and last but not least, uh, I believe that uh, we need to uh, uh, promote uh, ASEAN's uh, engagement in helping uh, Myanmar people from a humanitarian crisis, being political crisis or crisis uh, generated by COVID-19 and the social economic fallout. And I think uh, AHA Center might be playing a very important role uh, in uh, providing humanitarian assistance uh, to uh, the victims of both political crisis and social economic crisis in Myanmar. And uh, in this regard, I think we have to work with uh, external uh, uh, partners, uh, especially uh, uh, full dialogue partners of ASEAN, uh, to ensure a smooth and effective uh, provision of humanitarian um, assistance uh, to Myanmar. Dr. Van Rutt, as mentioned by Dr. Barai, that political trust is one of the most important agenda for Cambodian chairmanship in 2022. Just in case Cambodia has been agreed by all the ASEAN member states and assigned to be the special envoy for the ASEAN chair in 2022, what should be the most prioritized scenario for Cambodia in order to uh, I mean, promote the political trust between Cambodia and um, the Myanmar leader and as well the leaders, uh, concerned leaders in, in Myanmar itself. And from your perspective, what should be um, I mean, the role for Cambodia uh, in dealing with this um, the issue in Myanmar? What should be um, you know, the prioritized uh, scenario for Cambodia in order to succeed um, a fruitful ASEAN chairmanship in 2022, as well as a successful special envoy for the ASEAN chair in dealing with the Myanmar issue, Dr. Van Rett? Uh, in terms of uh, trust building, uh, we need to have different layers. Uh, first, uh, we need to build trust within ASEAN itself. So, observing the past political episode within ASEAN, we can see the kind of division uh, political division between uh, some ASEAN member states. So that's something that we need to build ASEAN consensus and unity on, on Myanmar. So Cambodia chair need to have uh, quiet diplomacy or shuttle diplomacy uh, with some key uh, member state in Southeast Asia. Right? Uh, so that is something that first we need to do. Uh, second layer is trust between ASEAN and Myanmar, ASEAN 9, ASEAN 9 and Myanmar, uh, because the, the bridge of trust have been somehow uh, disrupted, uh, undermined by the uh, different uh, political agenda and kind of vision as well uh, between ASEAN 9, several ASEAN members and, and Myanmar. So we need to restore this kind of trust between ASEAN 9 and Myanmar, which is quite challenging, uh, taking into consideration the evol evolving political dynamics in, in Myanmar uh, that try to marginalize, sideline, or even kind of abolish the main opposition party uh, leaders, Aung San Suu Kyi, and, and the, the team, 
the, the leadership. It's one of the another layer of complexity in, in trust building. So third layer is between ASEAN and the dialogue partners, right? Dialogue partner referring to some key actors like China, uh, United States, or Japan, Russia, uh, to some extent India and Australia uh, in providing a, a kind of comprehensive uh, solution to Myanmar issue, so that ASEAN can, you know, can utilize their their dialogue partnership, all this with these uh, major uh, key actors uh, to solve, provide solution to Myanmar. And the last layer of trust building is between uh, the Myanmar themselves, uh, different political factions. Uh, we need to bring also the ethnic armed groups uh, into the negotiation table. So at least three, uh, three political factions need to be included, uh, the, the, the military, uh, the, the civilian political party, uh, the League of Democracy, uh, led by Aung San Suu Kyi, and of course the ethnic armed groups. So this group are the key political stakeholders that we need to bring to the table. So how to build trust uh, between uh, these three groups, three main groups? Uh, we have tried, uh, but not so successful over the past 10 years. Uh, we have tried different tracks, actually, track 1, track 1 1.5, and track 2, even track 3 level. So, so those are the, the, and of course the foreign minister uh, will be the special envoy if the other ASEAN member state agree. And his role, he can fulfill all these four layers of trust buildings, right? But when it comes to the uh, a highest level of political consensus, the Prime Minister need to play a critical role. So, so that, that is the, some of the key uh, roadmap or pathway uh, for Cambodia chairmanship next year in dealing with the uh, uh, Myanmar issue. Yep, uh, if I may, I would like to add um, on what um, Dr. Van Red has uh, mentioned, um, that, um, you know, in order to address the Myanmar political crisis, uh, sometimes we have to be uh, pragmatic uh, based on reality on the ground. And indeed, you know, the wheel of history evolves uh, according to uh, choices that uh, we make. And more often than not, uh, the choices are not easy at all. And, you know, with wrong choices, we might uh, repeat past atrocities. Um, so we need uh, to be uh, on full alert uh, to prevent uh, the history to repeat itself. Now, the reality uh, in Myanmar is that the military junta, the Tatmadaw, has always been one of the most important political forces in the country. And it remains uh, uh, the most important, one of the most important political uh, forces uh, in Myanmar. So any credible political uh, process needs to involve uh, the military junta, the Tat Madal. Um, and uh, the lesson that we should uh, draw as well from uh, reason, the reason uh, fiasco in Afghanistan is, is that the political process needs to be uh, Myanmar own and Myanmar led. The international community, including ASEAN, uh, uh, has uh, its role to play, but cannot replace the roles of all parties concerned in the Myanmar, Myanmar political crisis. So I think we all, the international community, should uh, give uh, a, a chance to peace in Myanmar by acknowledging this uh, reality, uh, by providing necessary uh, support so that uh, an inclusive uh, Myanmar-led, Myanmar-owned political process can be taken place. And uh, the international community should help ASEAN especially Cambodia as the chair of ASEAN next year, uh, to fulfill these responsibilities as well. Um, uh, let's hope for the best, but it is a challenging task. Uh, we have to work together 
uh, to give uh, a peace in Myanmar a chance. So the last question, um, by focusing on an international research institution or what we call think tanks, what should be the role for Cambodian think tanks in order to help the government to resolve um, the crisis in Myanmar or like act as the, the mediator or the special, a good special envoy for Myanmar? Uh, the, the role of track 2 or even track 1.5 become more crucial when uh, track 1 diplomacy fail. Uh, so we, we have seen a significant kind of setbacks in the track 1 uh, diplomacy. So this is the kind of opportunity uh, for track 1.5 and track 2 to play their role. Um, the think tank community in Cambodia and across the region have been paying close attention to, to Myanmar. Uh, different platforms and different roundtables, mainly a closed door discussion among uh, think tankers on Myanmar because think tankers, they are not constrained by political agenda and they, they tend to uh, express their view frankly and openly. So this frank and open discussion promote mutual understanding and promote and help us to understand the reality in Myanmar. If you look at Myanmar issue from a political lens, then we are we will be blind by the political agenda. But if you look at it from a technical, theoretical, even conceptual, historical perspective, then we can see it in a, another picture, broader picture. So that is the role of think tank that can contribute to track one because track one uh, cannot say much. Uh, sometimes they know uh, the roadmap, they know what should be done, but due to a political constraint, they cannot express their view. But the think tank uh, have much space, uh, freedom uh, to, to express their view. So this is a critical space. I call it a critical space for mutual understanding and, of course, trust building. Okay. So thank you, Dr. Vanarut and Dr. Barai for uh, sharing your time participating in the Asian Vision Dialogue first episode. Ladies and gentlemen, we have now come to an end of the Asian Vision Dialogue first episode. Thank you and see you again in the next episode.